I live only to die at Vitalis' pleasure. I exist to be burnt over and over for his amusement. I am a Vitalis hunter, and this is how it will be now. Forevermore. Death. Return. Death. Return. An endless cycle to appease a god. <laughs> Hello, my fellow hunters! How are you finding Mr. Fatalis? I imagine the answer in a lot of cases is somewhere on the spectrum of awesome and a bit of <laughs> and you know that's I think about right for the black dragon, the strongest monster, he who destroys the world in three days. Or at least, supposedly he does. But, I guess the question is, not if he is hard, because he is that, but if he is fun, if he is a worthy grand finale to all that is world and Icebond. Well, to my mind, yes, yes he is, because honestly, I wouldn't want anything less from Fatalis. Fatalis, Fatalis, the monster. I want him to wipe the floor with me. I want him to absolutely destroy me. I want to feel like I am fighting against almost insurmountable odds. And when sweet victory cometh, well, it tasteth the sweeteth if, 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 if you um get my drift. The point is, Vitalis almost gets a full free pass to just go mental, because if you can't go mental with the canonically strongest monster, when can you go mental? But that's all well and good to make him as powerful as his law. If he turns out to just be unfun and frustrating, then you've still done a bad job. But to me, nothing he does is inherently unfair. Nothing he does is bullshit. There's no arbitrary checks or timers or just this one shot you sorry about that outside of course his bathe the world in flames but you know you have a plenty amount of time to run to the safe spot and i don't think that's bad it's a way of showing just how powerful he is giving him that bear what 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 the hell sound did i just make <laughs> i don't understand what sound i just made bear <laughs> It's times like these if I wonder if I should start scripting my videos, but then I'm like, nah. Giving him that beautiful apocalyptic attack was almost necessary. Otherwise, people would be asking, is that it? That's Fatalis? And you can't be having that about the monster. So let's actually go back to that whole no arbitrary time limits or checks thing. And this is the one... Uh, Fair enough complaint that I have uh, got from a few people, and it is definitely worth talking about. You have half an hour to do near 80,000 damage, at least when solo hunting, to a monster that is relentless, to a monster whose good hit zones are frustrating as all hell to hit, to a monster who is essentially constantly spamming one to two shot AoE fire attacks across the map. And while every attack he has, every single one, is infinitely learnable, just as is it infinitely punishing, you can get a situation where you're like, I just can't get enough uptime to kill him in half an hour. But you want that feeling straight away because you can. The arena is set up to give you all the advantages. Even just little things like the little jutting pieces of pillar rock blocking his big potent cone fire breath. It's all there to just give you the edge. It's a very learnable encounter with lots of little secrets and efficiencies and things to work out that can give you just that final Final push you need to just get over the line. But at the end of the day, this is the hardest fight in World of Spawn by a country mile. It's also one of the hardest monster to fights I think I have ever done. Yet it is also one of the most satisfying and fun, and that is commendable. In fact, I think it is impressive to have made Fatalis so enjoyable, yet so powerful. 
Except for when he does the flop and he knocks you down so you're lying on your back and you can't do anything other than wait for him to just finish you off with a guaranteed card. That is ridiculous. So, that all said, and I again, I want to mull over my thoughts some more, but currently, I think he is brutal but fair. He lives up to his name, and I couldn't ask for a fight with more grandeur to see off Iceborne. But of course, I want you all to kill him. So, here are my top ten tips to do just that. Number one, and this is the biggest one, give yourself the perfect start. Gilly Mantle is God against the God of all monsters. And the reason for that is, combined with an artillery build, and yes, you do want to bring artillery against Vitalis, at least for the first half of the fight. Honestly, a healthy supply of Farcasters and switching builds goes a long way here. But more on that later. For now, the perfect start is thus. Take your ghillie mantle, put it on before you go down. Fly on over, he'll have a little look at you. Oh, flying bush, okay. And give you a little roar, but he won't start fighting. Then run over to the cannons, load them both fully up. You want the rightmost one to be pointed at Vitalis, you want the leftmost one to be pointed kind of in front of the wall-ish. Then when you are ready, fire the first one, it will clobber him for 450 and a go, because you got your artillery, and then he will charge towards the wall, at which point you fire the other one to do it once more. This will flinch him, sending him careening to the ground and letting you get that sweet, sweet damage on his squishy, squishy head. So even this is an opening of four and a half thousand damage and a full round of whatever you're going to do while he's down. Now you could immediately go back, get rid of artillery, put something more offensive on at this point, but I would like to keep it for the entire fight because it doubling the damage of the Dragonator and of the Roaming Ballista is huge. The damage output of the siege weapons is colossal and honestly key to the whole thing. The Ballista pumps out thousands upon thousands. The Dragonator is a nice near 7k when you are rocking the artillery. Just between Dragonator, two Ballistas and the opening cannon barrage, that's a near third of his health you can shave relatively safely and easily. Then, tip number two is flinching him properly, and that is to say that if he is back on his haunches and you flinch shot him, all it will do is put him on the ground, as in flat all four legs, but not actually knock him over or flinch him or really do anything other than tickle him. So what you want is to wait till he's already flat to the ground, then get your flinch shot off, and then you can send him careening into a wall for a nice 2% of his health in damage. Now, he will destroy the cannon platforms if you use them, but after the first volley, you kinda don't need them. Though admittedly, every ghillie cooldown, whacking it on and doing something with the siege equipment is definitely worthwhile. Now, while we're talking about the perfect start, tip three, use your items. I am so guilty of this. I think I have used demon drugs maybe once in the whole of world on Iceborne. But when you're looking at something like Vitalis, every little helps. It's very, uh, yeah, you think, but yeah, do it. Have your demon drugs. Take all of your buffs. Hell, even using smoke bombs to get free hits can be really, really good. And of course, firecasters, not only to change builds, but to get you out of horrific situations. Tip number four, then, is the horns. If you destroy them, you weaken him in his, like, super flame, purple flame mode significantly. If you destroy both horns, it's essentially like you're fighting just the phase one Fatalis the entire way. Now, getting the second horn break is quite tricky. You need to pump a ridiculous ridiculous amount of damage into it, but the first one isn't too bad. I would recommend getting some part breaker on your build on top of your artillery and actually focusing his head completely in the first half of the fight. You see, at 50% is when he goes super flame, supernova, glow chest mode. So you have half his health pool to get a horn break before that point to make the home stretch that much easier for you. So get it 
done, use your temporals, get it tenderized, focused on it, hit his head with the cannons, every single drop you can do, get your mount in this phase just to get more health damage, and yes, he's mountable, it takes a fair amount of effort, but he is quite the brutal mount, you uh, don't really want to be leaping around him, his struggles last so long, just grip onto him every time and eventually you will get him. The next tip then is Dragon Pods. Oh yes, the light weapons can peel them off. He'll start dropping them himself eventually. They are amazing. Two Dragon Pods and he will flinch. This saves lives and it will save your life. It will cancel any given move that he is doing very quickly and let you take control of the fight. Honestly, Dragon Pods are so good against Vitalis, I'd almost recommend Slinger Capacity just to keep spamming them at him, locking him down while everyone beats on him. It really is the MVP here, Dragon Pods. And if you do get hit by the aforementioned bullshit slam where it puts you on the ground and you have to wait to die, if you have Dragon Pods, you don't have to wait to die. Just fire two of them at him, flinch him, and you are good to stand up. Then, for tip six, it is the siege equipment once more. Use it! Try and get the Auto Ballista when he's flying. If you can break his wings, it not only will send him careening out the sky, but it will reduce the amount of time he likes to fly anyway. I recommend saving your binders for as close to the end of the fight as you can get. The same with the Dragonator. You want it to be your ace in the hall at trump cards. But the biggest thing for the Siege equipment is a Sleep Dragonator. This can bring Dragonator up to a decisive blow. Good night! Oh. Farcaster back to base, switch to a sleep weapon, get yourself back there, fire it into his face, put him to a lovely world of dreaming of destroying all humans, and then wake him up with the world's largest thrusting implements. Nice little way to get the most out of it. Then, tip number seven. Please use defensive skills, Divine Blessing Secret at level 5, that gives you a 60% reduction more often than not, and that saves you so, so much. It takes two shots down to three shots, one shot down to two shots, it really is clutch, especially when you're learning the fight, because although the half an hour is intimidating, you lose much more damage having to constantly heal or being dead than you gain from having just a few more more points of attack. Alive hunters are damage dealing hunters, and you want that fire resist, you want that divine blessing. Hell, even stuff like speed eating, so you're not being caught out slowly chugging potions. Any little utility skill will do more for you, letting you just stay in the arena than pumping out that final little bit of damage, at least right now when we're still figuring him out. Then, when it comes to his statuses, just a little bit of info. He very much is immune to KO, but all the others work, and his paralysis time is actually really, really long, so you might want to consider at least getting one of them in. Then, when it comes to tip 9, it's the Nova thresholds, or the end of the world flames, or whatever you want to call it, but he does the first one that destroys your first cover and opens up the arena at 75%, and then when you hit 50%, he will do the next one requiring you to use the barrier, and at that point, he's in his glow chest mode, and the fight really begins. Then he has three more Novas after this. This one is a lot harder to work out the exact uh, percentages for, but it's roughly one at 40%, one at 20%, and one at 5%. So him going up to do the big burn is honestly just a really good, yay, checkpoint, we're doing well, we're getting there, as long as you manage to get to the safe place. And seriously, dash juice, infinite running, that's what you need. Oh, all right. And then finally, Tip 10 is watch the full, complete breakdown, in-depth, attack-by-attack, mechanic-by-mechanic guide coming tomorrow, all being well. Yes, the 10th tip is to go watch an even more in-depth guide that I'm also going to be uploading. Ooh, that's evil. I love it. Thanks, Vitalis.
Thanks. Alright guys, let me know how you're getting on. Look forward to the pro and noob. Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon. A good boy. Rage gaming with the video float. But that's all that's really relevant at the mo. But I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kind of relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song. And don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit.